a lot of the dialogue was work harder and the same thing with training work harder and just then you will win then it will all come together there was not a lot of conversation at least I felt, especially in business, around the idea of just feeling good and the concept of if you feel good, then you'll want, you'll have more energy, then you'll want to do the things because you're feeling good and you're in that vibrational stance, you'll attract the things. And it's not some woohoo magic thing, you know, it's not all of a sudden like the universe magically appears and shows you all of the things, it's that you are out of your own way that you can see them. to be here with all of you you know the spring is in the air oh things are slowly starting to feel like that energy of when we move into the action you know all of I keep saying to my team we've been like we're like squirrels we've been like holding on to all of these nuts and gathering all of these nuts throughout the winter and now we're able to prosper from all of the work that we've done throughout the entire summer or throughout the entire winter so here we are I've been thinking a lot lately about a lot of the conversations I've been having and a lot of the dialogue that I've been having with you, the community, um, a lot on social media around this concept of just feeling good. And I will be the first to admit that it was, you know, the most foreign, I would say, idea, because that's not how I was raised. It's not how I got any, I feel like I got some of my successes in my life. It's not how I got through, you know, school as a, as a young girl and as an adolescent it was not from feeling good first. At least that's not my perception of it. You know, it was from hard work, getting it done, pulling up your socks, figuring out what resources you need, and then going after it, making it happen. I literally got it tattooed to my wrist. <laughs> it's mountains. And it, for me, it represents either I shall find a way or I will make one. And a lot of what this conversation just did was perpetuate the thought that it has to be hard. I have to work hard. So insinuating that there has to be some suffering. I have to not probably not feel very good in order to then become sex, su successful in order to then win or get the goal or, you know, accomplish anything worthwhile. A lot of the dialogue was work harder. And the same thing with training, work harder and just then you will win. Then it will all come together. There was not a lot of conversation, at least I felt, especially in business, around the idea of just feeling good. And the concept of if you feel good, then you'll want, you'll have more energy. Then you'll want to do the things because you're feeling good and you're in that vibrational stance. You'll attract the things. And it's not some woohoo magic thing. You know, it's not all of a sudden like, the universe magically appears and shows you all of the things. It's that you are out of your own way that you can see them because they're always there. All of those types of uh, support and the resources that you need are surrounding you right now. Right now, as we're having this conversation, those things are surrounding you in your space. But oftentimes we're so bombarded and clouded with our judgment is clouded. Our eyes are clouded with this idea that it has, I have to work hard, I have to struggle, I have to suffer, and I have to sacrifice. Otherwise, I won't be successful, it won't feel good. And then we add on the conversation to when I get there, when I become successful, when I get this job promotion, when I accomplish this goal, when I make this certain amount of money, when I buy the house, then I'll be happy, right? And we've all heard the story or the phrase of enjoy the journey. You know, it's not about the destination or the the uh, destination. It's about the journey. It's about the entire process. But I used to personally, I would just take that and be like, yeah, 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 cool. I have all the work to do. You know, you're not in my shoes. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna huff and puff and I'm I'm gonna pull out my socks and I'm just gonna do the work. And it took me years, like I'm talking years, I'm talking thyroid cancer, I'm talking burnout, I'm talking depression, for me to finally just surrender to this concept. And that's what the, comp the types of conversations I've been having lately, because it was after years of doing this where I started getting burnt out, 
getting what I call stress sick. So literally out of nowhere, I would wake up in the morning, I'd have to cancel all my clients because I would have a headache, I would feel nauseous, and I would just be exhausted at my cellular level. You know, it wasn't just, a, oh, I'm so tired today. I had a, you know, I didn't have a great night's sleep. It's like I can barely get out of bed. And I saw specialist after specialist. I was chronically bloated, feeling like I basically looked pregnant all the time. I took supplement after supplement. I had testing on testing. And it was coming back with some interesting information and definitely some things I needed to address, but nothing really made me feel that much better. You know, it was like I was constantly searching for something that was going to lift the veil, give me all this energy, and all of a sudden make me feel happy and energetic again. And it was more of just like begrudgingly letting go and surrendering to this old notion. I decided clearly this isn't working for me. You know, if all of these test results are coming back and saying like, there are little things that you have to work on, but it's nothing, you know, too big of a deal. I've beaten cancer. I've moved past that. I am sleeping 10 hours a day. I eat impeccably well. I move my body and I still feel like garbage. So the last resort is fine. If none of this stuff is working, I give up and I'm going to surrender and I'm just going to try and enjoy my life. And it wasn't that easy, to be honest. It wasn't like this just, you know, all of a sudden I woke up and I was happy every single day, <laughs> you know, like definitely having some support of some healthy food and some healthy supplements. But anytime I would watch, listen to my, my thoughts get to this place where I would start worrying and I would start to feel the feelings of, you know, it crept up into my throat and feeling stressed out and started to feel exhausted again. I just kind of visualized myself falling back into a field and just letting it go. And bit by bit, I watched myself wake up and just be happy. And in the middle, in the middle of the day, be happy for no reason. And my ego was screaming, you know, what's happening? What's going on? Why are we not trying to figure out a problem? And this, mind you, is amongst, you know, in the heart of the pandemic, in the heart of some of the hardest times in our entire being, my mind's going, what are you doing? Like, we have a problem we have to solve. There's got to be something we have to solve. There's got to be something we can fix. If you, what are you doing? You're being lazy. You're not working hard enough. You're not going to get anywhere by doing this and on and on and on with the chatter. But I was just so fed up with that narrative that I just kept surrendering and letting go. And there's still stress and there are still moments that, you know, life is, things are still going to happen, but it's what you choose to see and focus your energy on that is the immense game changer. So I made a commitment to myself. I made a commitment to feel good for the sake of feeling good. To feel good for the sake of feeling good. And it was like all of the years of reading, the literature that I dove into, that I underlined and that I dog-eared and I've been rereading, you know, the likes of Miriam Williamson, the likes of Gabby Bernstein, Abraham Hicks, um, uh, A Course in Miracles, all of these brilliant texts. It's all of a sudden came to a forefront in my mind of, this is what they mean. This, this is how this works. It's not hard work. It's just a surrender to decide to feel good first, despite anything and everything that's going on in your life. And the shift and change in my physical well-being was the thing that was, has been most noteworthy. From being chronically exhausted, which absolutely made no sense to me because I was genuinely getting 10, 9, 10 hours of sleep a night. Easily, easily, easily. The shift in energy that I have felt has been miraculous. That is a miracle in and of itself. Just feeling good. It's almost like it's released all of the toxins from my body so that I can have energy. And in this space, you feel supported. You see solutions. You see all of the abundance that is around you. And maybe not every single day, but you know that it's always there every single moment. But you know that it's always there. 
So the conversations that I've been having lately have just been centered around a lot of this and encouraging others to just feel good for the sake of feeling good. And I had a few questions that came in um, that I really, really wanted to address. So let me just get them over here. So one of them was, okay. One of them was, how do you feel happy first? Like, how do you just decide to feel happy first, you know? And the main thing I will, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's your daily habits. And instead of letting your mind run you, you run your mind. And you do this, again, not through hard work, but you do this through meditation. You be, have a disciplined mind when you meditate. When you give yourself the opportunity to have that type of deep relaxation, that makes a genuine difference in the type of attitude that you bring. There's one practice that I follow regularly and it's actually writing how I, I want my day to go. How do I want to feel? What do I want? How do I want to serve? And what type of person do I want to be? And I write this out and then I sit in those feelings. And that's what I mean where you can feel happy first, you can feel good first because you just, you just conjure up a memory of a time where you felt good and you felt happy and you live in that vibration, you live in that energy. And that's how you start to feel good first. You don't wait to solve this problem or to get this grade or to land this deal to decide to feel good. We've all had moments in our life where we felt great. So we conjure up those feelings and then we revel in them. You sit in them and you soak up every single last piece of this energy, this high vibration, this good feeling, and then you go out and you do the thing. In Move Camp, when we have our virtual events or even when we have our virtual or our in-person events, at the end of every single session, this is when it's my turn to do the gratitude piece. This is what I talk about. You feel the thing that you are most grateful for in this moment, the thing that one thing that you can think of that makes you feel incredible and then you take that energy and you give it out and this is why you'll hear a lot of these spiritual leaders especially during times like these that will say we are the light and it is our light that we need to share to show other people that they can do that and that's how we collectively heal the world and we work on this together and it all starts with you and the common, most common misconception is that you have to do some end result, get somewhere in order for you to feel good first. And in fact, it's the complete opposite. If you feel good now, then you will continue to get to where you want to go. And that brings me to the other question that I was brought to my attention is what do you mean when you say share your light? So when you're in those energies, when you feel that high vibration, so you're sharing your light, so you feel the light, you feel good, you go and do the thing that you're called to do. And that could be being the best caretaker possible to somebody who's dying. Or that could be creating the best content on social media because you are an impeccable creator. That could be being the best CEO, being the best mom, being the best parent, being the best husband, whatever you feel called to do, share your light. And this also doesn't have to be complicated. What, what makes you feel good and what lights you up inside, start doing more of that. Because having people watch you share your light gives them permission to share their light as well. And it's just not negating that there are difficult things that are going on and can go on in life. But if we spend more time, I think it's fair to say we've spent a lot of time in those other spaces and those dark spaces. And if we can spend time feeling really, really great, then it gives others the permission to do the same. And magic happens in this place. You're able to put forth in the world what you're meant to do, the energy that you're supposed to share, the creative gifts that you're supposed to give. We need you. We need that light right now. So when we talk about here at More Than Movement with Mia, we talk about feeling good so that we can continue to take care of the best care of ourselves. We can become the best version of ourselves. And by feeling good first, it gives you energy, it gives you motivation, it helps clear the cobweb so you can see what it is that you're meant to do and who you are meant to become. 
And believe it or not, it actually continues to give you the energy and the motivation to move your body in whatever way you feel called to move your body. So it's this beautiful, super simplistic thing that we can all do. And that's just learning to feel good now. Feeling good for the sake of feeling good right where you're at, no matter what. <laughs>